Hello friends! I made this video last year for the Needy Homesteader YouTube channel as a way to keep content going on her channel while she and her family recovered from the tragic accident that claimed the life of her husband Matt and also severely injured Heather and her two children. I hope that you enjoy this recipe that Heather inspired me to make. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Needy Homesteader YouTube channel. My name is Rachel and I am one of the creators who Heather has asked to create some videos for her channel to keep her content going and I am more than happy to do that. Today's video is going to be a ham and cheese roll. She did a video a little over a year ago for a pizza roll and the pizza roll has become a staple in my house for dinner time. And when she was making the recipe, she said, you may want to try any sort of variation on this recipe, maybe even a ham and cheese roll. So that is what we're going to do today. I met Heather about three years ago through Allison, also through YouTube. And uh, we kind of bonded over our love of food and kitchen, but also we're homeschool moms, homeschooling about the same amount of time. Her kids are close in age with mine. And we started talking about all of that and just really grew a friendship from that. You can find me on YouTube, Real Housewife Rachel. I will leave that in the description box below. And I will also put the recipe and any products I use, I'm gonna link below if I can find them. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, as you can see, I'm starting with a cup and a half of warm water. And then to that, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of instant yeast. You can use regular yeast if you want. You just need to let it proof for about five minutes before you start mixing everything else in. As you can see, I'm using my KitchenAid stand mixer. It is not a fancy one like Heather's. One day, one of these days, I'll get one. <laughs> I'm using the dough hook uh, attachment with this and of course adding a tablespoon of salt. I know it's a lot of salt, but this is gonna make a lot of dough you're about to see. And I like to just mix this a little bit before I start adding other things just to get it combined. And I think that's really important with something like a savory bread like this for ham and cheese or for pizza. It's good to use some seasonings. And I'm not measuring here, but I'm using some Italian seasoning and a garlic and herb seasoning that my husband found at Walmart. It is so delicious. All right, once that is a little bit combined, I start adding the flour. Now this recipe calls for five cups of flour. Now I live in Indiana and it is spring and it's, it's not real humid, but it's not real dry either. And I found I like to start with three cups of flour and kind of work up from there. It seems to be different every time I make it for this and my regular pizza dough. I usually start with about three cups of flour and just kind of let it knead in the KitchenAid mixer until it has the right consistency. And it probably ends up being around four cups of flour. As you can see here, it is sticking to itself and not a lot to the bowl, but if you look down at the very bottom right before I added that flour, it is sticking a little bit. So there's a lot of trial and error here. But if it gets too dry, add a little water. If it gets too wet, add a little flour. You may end up with a really, really, really big pizza roll. <laughs> this is still a tad sticky, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour until it's where I want it to be. And by the way, I know I'm running this sped up so you don't look at this kneading for hours and hours and hours, <laughs> but I never run this higher than speed number two on my KitchenAid mixer. And as you notice, it is sticking more to itself and not to the bowl, and that means that it is time to take it out. You can see I'm touching it here. It looks pretty perfect at this point. And I like, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. I just use my counter to knead out any dough or bread that I have, especially if I'm not cutting it with any sort of utensil. But I'm just kind of flopping it out of the bowl onto a floured surface, which is my countertop. And I'm just gonna knead this for a minute or two. Uh, I don't even know, to be honest, if it needs to be kneaded like this. <laughs> But man, there is nothing like getting your hands in dough. This is my favorite part of the whole process, kneading it into a nice little ball. Mm -hmm. 
And when it's all in a nice little ball, I like to look at it nice and closely and see all those little flecks of the Italian seasoning, the other herbs that went into it. Oh, it's so nice and so soft and perfect. And at this step, I'm taking my bowl, this is just the bowl that I happened to grab, and put a little bit of olive oil in it. Like in my last video, I went a little heavy handed, but that's okay. I just like to swirl the dough ball in the bowl like that and get some oil on it, and then throw a towel on it and let it rest for a bit. This needs to rest for 30 minutes. After it's finished resting, I'm gonna set the oven to 400 degrees, which is where we're gonna bake our ham and cheese roll. And I'm taking it out and, no, wait you guys, maybe this is my favorite part of the process. The punch. Oh my goodness, so satisfying. Now it's time to roll it out and this makes quite a bit of dough. You could cut this in half and make two smaller ones. You could just roll this out, and if you change your mind, you could just make a pizza with this. It, it would make a nice, huge pizza for your oven. And I love doing this as well, and I'm kind of a perfectionist with its shape, but I like to get it kind of in a square type shape because we are gonna roll it up and I want it to be even. I'm using some pepper jack sliced cheese from Aldi. Actually, everything you're seeing here is from Aldi. <laughs> That's pretty much the only place I shop. And I have never done this recipe with sliced cheese. I always use shredded, but I thought it might be really, really nice to use some sliced cheese. And so I'm just laying it out there. I didn't even have to use this much, guys, <laughs> as you'll see later. But I'm adding to it some honey ham. You can use any lunch meat that you want, any lunch meat that you have, and just lay it out. And this series is, of course, called Inspired by Needy because uh, those of us who are participating in the collab are making videos based on what Heather inspired us to do. And her recipes, especially the bread ones, have inspired me so much to try different things, try different flavor combos. And there's just, it's amazing once you learn how to make bread and dough, all of the options that are open to you. And I wanna thank Heather for uh, allowing me to participate in this. This has been really fun to show how I have been inspired by Needy. And as you can see here, I'm just gonna roll it up as tight as I can. And of course, pinch the ends, pinch the, the little bottom seam there and kind of roll it so that it seals it a little bit. And now it is time to bake it. I'm gonna bake this on my Pampered Chef large bar pan. This thing is about 12 years old and I just love it. Look how beautifully seasoned it is. I'm taking this little paring knife and putting some slices in it and you'll see why in a little bit. Oh my goodness, so ooey gooey. <laughs> and you don't have to do this, but I like to do this to give some golden brown to the top. Just taking some olive oil, you use whatever oil you want on top of here and it's just gonna make the, the top really glow golden brown. And this is another optional step, but I'm adding this seasoning I got from Aldi. It's one of those everything but the bagel seasonings, but it's Asiago cheese. Oh my goodness, I could have added this to the inside of the ham and cheese roll too. All right, I'm gonna bake this in a 400 degree oven for 25 minutes. Hey, I'm back, not on a voiceover. My house is empty, so I feel like I can talk to you guys. Look how beautiful this is. You can see how the cheese is golden. Oh my goodness, and let me get my knife and cut into this. It's so hot. I can't really touch it. But there we go. There we go. 
Let me bring this down. Look how delicious. Look at that drippy cheese. Oh my goodness. Now it is a little late <laughs> in the evening, so I'm not going to eat this right now. Of course, I'm going to slice off some, but this is what I like to do whenever I make this. I like to make, make everybody a slice and they come and get it. And that, that seems to, to work best with people and just kind of come off the cutting board and pick off however many slices they want. And when I reheat this, I actually like to take the slices, meat and cheese side up, and put them under the broiler for a few minutes in the oven. It's better than, well, everything's better than microwave, but it crisps them up in the oven so nicely. And I know that you guys are gonna love this. Okay, I am going to bite into my little slice. It is 9.25 p.m., so I can't have a big one. <laughs> Almost bedtime. But I hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, be sure, if you enjoyed it, to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to Heather's channel, welcome! Click that red subscribe button. She has so much content on here, you guys. I come to Heather's channel to learn, and I have watched some of her videos over and over and over and over and over. I've learned so much from her, and I know you will too. So I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.